After breaking the news on where Comcast was thinking of building their next Universal Studios theme park, the company quickly confirmed our reporting, admitting they acquired 480 acres of land in Bedfordshire, England. Now, months later, they've released documents showing master plans for how this property may be built out, including the scale of a theme park, construction timetable, and transportation details. Let's dig into those plans and more in today's news update. Back in December, just a day after our initial report on documents showing the acquisition of land within the UK, a spokesperson from Universal Destinations and Experiences confirmed the story, giving an official statement to the Bedford Independent. They said, We recently acquired land in Bedford and are at the early stages of exploring its feasibility for a potential park and resort at this site. The company released a map image along with their statement. This official map shows the now confirmed 476 acres of land that Comcast owns and its relation to nearby roadways. A few days later, the company launched a website, universalukproject.co.uk, to reach out to members of the local community and keep them informed of this prospective project. Now, several months later, Universal has updated this website with much more information. They say they have been working on a feasibility study for the last few months and are ready to share more information with local communities. Public events have been scheduled in the upcoming weeks and an online survey is available to collect local feedback. The updated website includes a newer version of the map showing an updated boundary of the potential development including additional land to the east and the west of the main property, which may be utilized for transportation improvements. The updated website includes a frequently asked questions section, which explains that this site in particular was selected because it has the size and flat topography that is important for a large scale theme park resort. This confirms our rumored report that this site is being considered for a full-size theme park, and not just a smaller park, like Universal Kids being built in Texas in the US. The site was also chosen, of course, due to its connections to the rest of the UK. Most intriguing of the updates, however, can be found in a new 16-page PDF available for download on the site. This detailed proposal includes a possible master plan for how their land could be utilized, including the size and placement of the main theme park area. In these preliminary plans, the property is split into different zones. The core zone is where the main theme park areas could be located, leaving the lake zone for future use. There are also gateway zones to the west and east, which could feature rail stations and transportation hubs. Master plans show how these areas would be utilized in more detail, with Phase 1 and full build-out iterations. The proposed Phase 1 master plan shows a flat parking lot at the very south end of the property, shown as CPS in the plan. Shown in the center of the core zone, in a yellow color and marked as HTRDE, is what the document is calling the Hotel and Retail Dining Entertainment Area. There have been rumors for a 500-room hotel and small city walk area featuring four original restaurants attached to this project, and this proposed master plan seems to back up those concepts. The largest part of the core zone is of course the theme park itself, as well as theme park support areas. This would create a new theme park about the size of Universal's Islands of Adventure. Looking at the long-term master plan, the flat parking lot has been relabeled to allow for expansion of the theme park area. This could be possible with the addition of parking garages, opening up more land for more theme park expansion later on. The document states that there aren't any current plans to build structured parking, but if needed in the future, it would be no taller than 40 meters. As for the theme park itself, Universal says that 
It is too early in the process to know the possibilities of featured attractions and experiences, but that if they proceed with the project, they will confirm these at a later stage. Check out our first video on this topic for our thoughts on what we might expect to see at the new park, including some of the initial rumored properties, but stay tuned as these rumors evolve and change over time. North of the main theme park area, within the lake zone, the Phase 1 plan shows most of this area as temporary construction, shown as TMP on the plan. The light green area along the lake is listed as restoration area, which Universal says would focus on preserving, improving, and celebrating the natural environment. Looking at the same lake zone area within the long-term master plan, what was originally listed as temporary construction is now shown as mixed use. Of course, that could mean anything from hotels and resorts to shopping or even smaller theme park offerings. Perhaps we could see smaller theme park projects like the Universal Kids Park coming to Texas or the Universal Horror Unleashed year-round haunted attraction coming to Las Vegas, being utilized in this northern section of the property later on. Other options could include a water park like Volcano Bay or something new entirely. It's likely that even Universal is still unsure how to proceed with this northern area at this time. This proposal includes a landscape perimeter around most of the property. It shows off some visual examples saying, we beautifully landscape our theme parks and resorts and would provide an attractive landscape perimeter. In addition to creating significant green areas, the landscape perimeter reduces the visual impact of the resort and creates separation from the surrounding areas. When it comes to transportation, Universal predicts that up to 40% of visitors to the resort would arrive by rail. 35% would drive or be driven, with the rest arriving by bus, taxi, and other methods. The document includes breakdowns of where they would travel from and when the roads would be busiest. Universal has told community leaders that they expect the resort to attract a minimum of 8.5 million visitors per year. To help accommodate this large influx of new visitors, Universal would help with infrastructure upgrades, some of which have already been proposed for the surrounding area, but others that would be added specifically to serve access to this new resort. Most notably would be two railway stations. A new one on the main line on the Wixom side of the property, and another on the west side near the Future Resort's main transportation hub, which would replace the existing Stewartby and Kempston Hardwick stations. The proposed plans show this transportation hub on the west side of the property leading to the entrance of the hotel and possible city walk area. In addition to upgrades and expansions of existing roads, new roads would be added including dedicated slip roads leading from the A421, which would accommodate around 85% of the resort's traffic. By routing most of the incoming vehicles to the carriageway on the west side of the resort, it would help keep traffic away from the residential roads that run through communities like Wixom's and Stewartby. In case there was any doubt about the seriousness of Universal's proposal for a new theme park and resort, this document includes a plan for phased construction access. This phased construction traffic plan lists date-specific milestones. The first phase would begin in 2025 and be completed by the second quarter of 2027, which the graphic says would be the start of facility construction. Construction access via the slip roads would be available by the third quarter of 2028. The rail stations would be built by the end of 2029. And access to the interior roads for phase one would be completed by the end of 2029 as well. Now, while Universal says without having a final design for the theme park and resort, including the rides and attractions, they do not know how long construction would take but they expect it would be around five to six years. This aligns with our initial rumor that they were targeting a 2030 opening. While actual construction has obviously not begun around the site, some preparations have been made during the feasibility study. These preparations include minor land clearing, 
new concrete barriers and fences added, and utility flag markers placed in the ground. Excavators and other equipment have just started to show up on the site in recent days. Specific details were shared regarding self-imposed height limitations for the possible resort, with Universal stating that most elements would typically range in height from 20 to 30 meters, while a few may rise to a higher level to create visual interest and orientation within the theme park and resort. It goes on to say, the maximum height of any component would be 115 meters, for those of us not familiar with the metric system, that would put the tallest possible structures at 377 feet. This document includes examples of the resorts and offerings around the world, and touches on how the company has a positive track record of partnering closely with local communities, explaining the care and attention given to considerations like local wildlife, water resources, air quality, historic environment, noise and light, and waste management. Reaction from local residents, community leaders, and even the government seems to be mostly positive. In fact, in February, Transport Secretary Mark Harper said the government will want to do what we can to make sure that this exciting proposal comes to fruition. The mayor of Bedford, Tom Wooten, is completely on board. After visiting the site with Universal Destinations and Experiences last month, he said of the project, After my conversations with Universal, I believe it can provide jobs and exciting career and business opportunities for Bedford Borough residents for generations to come. Despite all of the positive news, it is important to remember that the Universal UK project, which is rumored to be named Universal Studios Great Britain, is still technically not greenlit. Universal has not yet committed to building a theme park and is still considering their options. Local residents only have until Friday, May 3, 2024 to make their voices heard. Community leaders have been told that Universal will make their final decision on whether or not to officially approve the project in June. Until then, we're going to have to continue to hold out hope for this exciting project's future prospects and keep our fingers crossed that it can stay on target for that 2030 opening. That's all for now, but I suggest subscribing to Universal Studios Great Britain updates on YouTube for more regular updates on this project, as they've been posting regular footage from the site, transportation upgrade details, and will be following the community meetings in the coming months. For even more information, as well as behind-the-scenes posts, your name in the credits, and more, consider joining our Patreon to support what we do. Patreon.com slash Theme Park Stop. Thanks for watching. See you next time.